For this presentation, I will briefly provide some descriptions of the following intercom units that are used with the 1A2 telephone systems. These were all outboard units manufactured by various companies to support the 1A2 systems that did not have built-in intercoms. Tone Commander was a intercom widely used in Oregon and Washington. And then the other intercoms were used, uh, of course, throughout the United States. And each of the Bell operating companies had their own preference of what uh, intercoms they generally used. There was a lot of intercoms made by Mitel, Tone Commander, of course, um, Teltone made them, and uh, there was a few other uh, not as popular brands which I do not have displayed here. The yellow intercom unit is what's called an MC9. This is a nice package for a small system where you only have four or five up to ten phones. Um, and it worked well. They were used with the ITT 601s and the Western Electric 551 KSUs. I have later in this video wired up a phone to demonstrate how the MC9 operates. We have here a Teltone, which was one of the major manufacturers of Intercom. The 19 means this is a 19 station intercom. These intercom package units were 10 station, 19 station, and 36 station. Melco did make a 90 station intercom, which I will not display here or discuss because I don't know anybody that would use an intercom that big in 2020. These intercoms have a connector, a plug actually, that you can plug in a 25 pair cable and terminate it on a 6 to 6 block. And that's where you connect your power, the tip and ring, lamp ground and lamp to the key phone, and then your buzzer leads or ringers if you're using high voltage ringing. Valcom was late to the game and they made a whole bunch of very nice packaged units. They also made paging units, multi-link adapter units, and other things that was widely used after the 1A2 systems was being phased out. So Valcom is a very popular today. I believe they still exist, manufacturing paging equipment and so forth. Most of these intercoms are pin-to-pin um, -pin compatible as long as you have, for an example, a 36 station and you're replacing it with a 36 station, most likely you will not need to make wiring changes. The intercoms I would discuss would be mostly 19 station because they're readily available and for the hobbyist, 10 station or 19 station is very adequate. 36 station intercoms are more complicated to wire because they don't provide a ground uh, return for each of the buzzer stations. As we're a 19 station, you have what's called the B and the R lead, and you just connect your buzzer directly to the B and R lead, and that's all that's needed uh, wiring wise. On a 36 station intercom, you would need to have one wire connected to the R lead and then a common bus, ground bus, to connect the other side of the buzzer to to complete the circuit or bell if you're using high voltage. These intercoms don't care if you use bells or buzzers. That is determined by what is wired to the common, I'm sorry, the audible input on the unit. So these units will switch 105 volts if that's what you put into it. 10 to 18 volts if that's what you put into it or you can connect it to ground and be switching a ground 
and have your buzzers and ringers wired hot all the time. I highly recommend that you do not wire your intercoms that way. I have in some instances done that because we needed to have a mixture of buzzers and ringers in like a factory or a warehouse. Doing that means you always have live voltage in the phone. Not that that is a danger, it's just a shock hazard. And if you don't know what you're doing or someone just innocently swaps a phone around that's not wired correctly, they could impact the entire system. These were made by Tone Commander out of Washington State. These were a very nice intercom. And again, they have an amphenol on it so you can plug in a 25 pair cable. The 25 pair cable is the same exact cable that you want a two phone would plug into. This particular cable was terminated on a 66 block for an intercom and I will be using that in the future for an intercom. Most of your intercoms were made to be combination. However, there was intercoms made that were rotary dial only, referred to as DP1000 or DP19, DP36. They also made some that was TC, tone only, which meant you could not use a rotary phone on it. Then they made the combination. The RT stands for rotary tone. You can use either tone or rotary phones. The TC19, which I have one of, and I don't know if this is functional or not, will only work for touchtone phones. And we have a very early TC19. This was the first generation of Tone Commander intercoms. I'm showing a close-up of the MC9. This unit was a very nice compact unit and it shows on the right side the ring code of R2 all the way down to R0. R1 does not exist. There is a transfer bus for something, but I've never used it. And then they have the tip and the ring and lamp that connect to the key phone on line generally 5 uh, or 9 if it's a 10 button set. And then you have lamp, which is 10 volt AC, and they call that lamp battery. And then you have your audible supply, which is the input to the intercom for whatever type of signaling you want. And then you have your A battery and B battery. We're looking at the side of one of the intercoms and where it says signaling source, the abbreviation is AUD space SUP. That stands for audible supply. Most all of the intercom manufacturers utilize audible supply as the input for whatever you wanted to switch to, uh, such as 10 volts, 18 volts, or 105 volts. Or if you wanted to, you could connect the ground to it and switch a ground for controlling relays, buzzers, or bells, uh, if the buzzer or bell was wired hot all of the time. Below, you'll notice there's an A ground, A battery, B ground, B battery. That's negative 24 volts. You can use A battery for both of those, A bat and A ground. It's 24 volts filtered battery. Most 1A2 power supplies have an A ground, A battery, B ground, B battery terminal marked on them somewhere. So you could connect this intercom up exactly as it says or just take the A ground and battery, strap it to the B ground and battery, and then connect it to A battery inside of your KSU. If you have a Western Electric 551, you only have A battery, so it won't matter. Your larger power supplies, they only filtered 
a small portion of the power and the rest was used for relays such as the 400 kTUs and so forth. You also notice in this particular case this is a 36 station intercom and the R code is R49 or R39. To use this intercom you would need at, on a 66 block a ground bus so that one side of the intercom could be connected to the ground bus and the other side of the intercom bus are connected to the R code. The R code is the extension um, for that particular phone. Here is a 19 station intercom and you'll notice it has the BNR28, BNR29. So the B would technically be ground and that is connected to the signaling ground which is called AUD GRND. I have here five buzzers that can be used with any of the intercoms as long as the intercom is set up for 10 or 18 volt AC signaling. This square looking rectangular buzzer can operate on AC or DC. This buzzer works best on 18 volts AC. These were found in the earlier Western Electric Telephone sets. The rest of these buzzers are all exactly the same made by different manufacturers. So we have a Western, I believe this is subtle, I'm not sure who made the other two. They work great on 10 volts AC or 18 volts AC. They also made a buzzer that has black leads most of the time and had a capacitor in series on one of the two leads and I do not have one for this video but it was a big black blob in the middle heat shrunk in the middle that was a high voltage 105 volt AC buzzer so of course it will not buzz on 10 or 18 volts AC those were generally used where you needed to have one phone ring on two different lines so the ringer inside the phone would be hooked up to one phone line. The high voltage buzzer would be connected to the second phone line so that then both numbers when called would ring on the same phone. Where one would buzz, one would ring. I wired up the MC9 to a 182 key set of 2565. I connected power down on the power leads. These intercoms are marked with what they call A battery and B battery. In the telephone industry, the central office and large PBX systems are connected to rectifiers that's connected to battery. In the very early days of the Magneto offices, the telephones had batteries in them and the power plant that ran the switchboard often was connected to batteries. So the terminology at that time was referred to battery. Here in, of course, night, uh, the year two, 2020, um, very few things you'll find of the PBX and key system world will probably have anything referring to battery. They'll just show it as plus and minus 24, 48, or whatever the power source may be uh, required to run that system. So on the 182 system's power supplies, depending on the power supply, there can be an A battery which is a filtered battery so that there's no hum on it and then there's a B battery which is non-filtered that's usually used for operating relays and non uh, audio path type equipment on the intercoms they will work perfectly fine if you use the A battery 
for both the A battery and the B battery. You will have no problems doing that. I installed hundreds of them that way as well as other people. Then they have what is called lamp battery which is 10 volts for all your 1A2 stuff. Then they have what's called audible supply, AUD and then SUP. That can be whatever you want to switch through the intercom. If you're working on the most basic 1A2 systems, it's generally 10 volts AC or 18 volts AC. I used 10 volts AC because it was a little game I could play uh, using the hold lamp and hooking the buzzer and the hold lamp on the same wires so when you called that extension the lamp lit up on that phone as well as the buzzer buzzing. If you did this with 18 volts you'll burn out your bulbs very quickly. The There has been times that the customer had in a factory where there was an incredible amount of noise wanted the ringers to ring inside of the telephone on the intercom. So we would put 105 volts AC 30 cycles ringing generator on it. That's good and fine. The only issue you run into is once you've hooked up the ringer to be the intercom noise maker you've lost your ability to have the phone ring on that line unless you put in diode matrix and that becomes a brand new level of complication that I don't recommend that anybody try. Or you could also just put a secondary line bell next to the phone and use it for the phone line or the intercom or the ringer on the phone line whatever you wanted to do. So I would demonstrate if this was in a standard business, as I described earlier, we would use line number five. We have the light lit from the intercom. I have two buzzers for test, extension two and extension zero. And I'm switching 10 volts AC to those two buzzers. I have here a nude Western Electric 2565 telephone set. So we'll refer to this as telephone porn for the next minute or so. In the Bell system, Western Electric phones, six button sets, they generally connected the intercom buzzer to the yellow, green, green, yellow pair. That pair also could be used for message waiting lamp if that was equipped on the system. ITT in their 2564, 2565, and 564 and 65 generally showed that the yellow, orange, orange, yellow would have the buzzer. So depending on who installed the system and the application, the buzzer could be on the yellow, orange pair. In Western Electric, it was always on the yellow-green in the six-button series. If this was a 10-button phone in the 830 or 2830, then the intercom buzzer would always be connected to the yellow-orange-orange-yellow. The yellow-green-green-yellow green, was the lamp for line number six in a 10-button set. Typically, on a six-button set, or any telephone set for that matter, the intercom generally was always the very last button of the phone. Six button, 10 button, 18 button, 30 button, and so forth. It could be wired anywhere, but the normal practice was always on the last button of the phone. So we could have four telephone lines and an intercom. These are referred to as six button sets because it's got a hold button but that's not a line key. However, it is a button and then you have your five line keys. Ten button, same thing. You have a hold button and then nine line keys. If you was connect two of these telephones on the same cable with a bridging adapter, then one of the buzzers would need to be connected on the yellow green and the other one on the yellow orange. 
if you had 10 button key phones then inside of it there's a common bus that's called a lamp ground bus and you would connect the buzzer to one lead of the buzzer to the lamp ground and the other lead of the buzzer to the yellow orange or orange yellow and then in the second phone you would connect the buzzer from ground to the opposite lead of this phone so one phone the buzzer would be yellow orange to ground the other phone would be orange yellow to ground that way you'd have you could call either phone um, individually if you had phones close together so we say two desks or four desks back to back and they all were had the same buzzer at the same volume you would not know which phone was called so in applications like that, I would just put a light bulb in on the hold and use the yellow, green, green, yellow so that when the phone was called, during the buzzer of the phone, the light would light up, the hold light, to let you know that that particular phone was being called. I've only worked in two systems in my lifetime that ever had message waiting that we actually used the hold button. So that was... Um, Kind of an oddity uh, but it can be used for that I'm including in this segment the manual intercom these are what's called 401s we have a ITT a Stromberg Carlson and two Western Electric 401 KTUs these were used to provide the talking power and to light the lights on what is called a button and buzzer type intercom.